In this Inkscape lesson, we'll create a text logo that has a stitched on fabric appearance. Let's start by creating a large rectangle for the background. Now let's open the fill and stroke dialog by clicking this button in the commands bar, and I'm going to give this a dark blue fill. Okay, now let's switch to the text tool and click somewhere in the rectangle. I'm going to type the word stitch in uppercase letters. Let's turn this red for now. Let's switch to the select tool, hold control, and scale this up. Now let's open the text and font dialog by clicking this button in the commands bar. For the font, we need something that has thick characters. I'm going to use Montserrat Heavy. If you don't already have this font, you can easily find it for free online. But any sans serif font with thick characters should work fine. Now I'll click apply and close this out. We're going to want to space these characters just a little farther apart so that the stitching doesn't overlap. To do this, we can switch to the text tool and increase the value in the letter spacing box here. I'm pressing the up and down arrow keys to change it by one pixel. Four pixels looks pretty good for me. Depending on the size of your canvas, you might need to use something a bit smaller or larger. Now let's go ahead and turn this into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Then ungroup the letters by clicking this button. Next we're going to create the U-shaped path that we'll use for the stitching. For this, I'll switch to the Circles and Ellipses tool and create a long thin oval up here. We actually want this to have a stroke and no fill. And the color of the stroke doesn't really matter, so I'll just shift click the black swatch here. Then I'll click this red X to turn off the fill. We can also go to the Stroke Style tab in the Fill and Stroke dialog and change the stroke width if necessary. That should be good. Now we want to turn the stroke into a path by going to Path, Stroke to Path. Next, let's switch to the Squares and Rectangles tool and start creating a rectangle above the oval and make it so it's covering about half of the oval. Now let's select both of these and go to Path, Difference. And let's copy this path into our clipboard by pressing Ctrl C. Next, let's select the S down here and duplicate it with Ctrl D. And let's change this to white, which will be the color of our stitching. To repeat our copied path along this S, we're going to use the Pattern Along Path Path Effects. So let's go to Path, Path Effects to open the Path Effects dialog. Then let's click the plus button down here. Then let's click on Pattern Along Path here. Now in here, first we want to change the Patterns Copy parameter to Repeated Stretched. This will repeat our stitching path along the path of the S, as well as stretch it so it will cover the entire path. Now let's click this Link to Path and Clipboard button here. Our stitching path is currently way too big, but because we have these linked together, we can select the stitching path here and change the size, which will change the size of the pattern as well. Let's zoom in a bit by holding Ctrl and scrolling up the mouse wheel. We're probably going to need to make this path pretty small. If we zoom into the S here, we can see some weird effects in some parts. To fix this, we can select the pattern, then increase this Fuse Nearby Ends parameter a little. Now it looks better. Let's now select the next letter, duplicate it with Ctrl D, and turn it white. And we can actually select the pattern path here and copy it with Ctrl C, then select the T and go to Path, Paste Path Effect. This will apply the copy path effect to the path along with the parameters we set. Let's repeat these steps with the other letters. This H is actually going to cause us some problems, as we'll see when we paste the path effect to it. It puts the pattern around each of the three rectangular parts. If we press Ctrl Z to remove the path effect, then go to Path, Break Apart, we can see that these are actually three separate subpaths. We want to turn them into a single path, which we can do by going to Path, Union. 
Now if we paste the path effect, it patterns correctly. However, this causes another problem, which we can see if we zoom in a bit. The pattern has been flipped, so now the rounded part is on the outside. To fix this, we need to reverse the direction of the path's nodes. We can do this easily by going to Path Reverse. Now it's all correct. Okay, next we're going to apply a striped pattern to the inner parts of the letters. For this, I'll create a rectangle up here. Let's turn off the stroke by shift clicking the red X down here. Now let's activate the color picker tool here and click the background rectangle. Now I'm going to switch to the fill and stroke dialog and make the color a bit brighter and more saturated. I'll make it a bit more cyan as well. Now let's switch to the select tool and let's duplicate this rectangle with the control D. Next, with custom node snapping enabled here, Let's drag the duplicate down until it snaps to the bottom of the other rectangle. And I'll make this one darker. We're now going to apply the Noise Fill filter to each of these rectangles to make them look more like fabric. First we need to duplicate each rectangle by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D. Let's also copy the hexadecimal value of this rectangle's fill color. We can do this in the Fill tab of the Fill and Stroke dialog by double clicking in this RGBA box here and pressing Ctrl C. The reason we want to copy the color is that we're going to use the color as the color of the noise that we apply to the other rectangle, giving it kind of a blended effect as we will see. So let's select this rectangle and apply the Noise Fill filter by going to Filters, Overlays, Noise Fill. Now let's go ahead and check this Live Preview box. Okay, the first thing we want to do in here is change Turbulence Type to Turbulence. Next we want to make Horizontal Frequency and Vertical Frequency pretty high. We can then play around with these other settings until we like what we see. Let's increase dilation a bit. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's switch to the Noise Color tab up here. We actually have this eyedropper button here, which is supposed to let us choose a color from the canvas, but it doesn't always seem to work. This is why we needed to copy the hexadecimal value of the color we wanted, because now we can paste it into here. We can also lower the opacity a bit. Okay, now let's click Apply and close this out. And because filters don't actually change the colors of the original object, we can go ahead and copy this rectangle's fill color value. Now let's select the other rectangle and apply the Noise Fill filter to it. If we switch over to the Options tab, we can see that it kept our previous settings. So we just need to switch to the Noise Color tab and paste the new color into the RGBA box. Let's lower the opacity a bit, then click Apply and close out the dialog. Okay, now we want to select all of these objects. Let's turn them into a pattern by going to Object, Pattern, Objects to Pattern. Now, if we select one of these red letter paths, in the Fill and Stroke dialog, we can click this button, and it will automatically apply the pattern we just created to the path. However, the stripes of the pattern are too big at the moment. To fix this, let's switch to the Node tool. Now I have these handles up here. If you don't see them, you might have to zoom out some, because Inkscape seems to put them at random locations sometimes. Anyway, we can use these to adjust the positioning, size, and rotation of our pattern. So let's shrink the pattern by grabbing the square handle and dragging it closer to the X. That should be good. Let's now switch to the Select tool and copy this path with Ctrl C. Now we can select the next red path and go to Edit, Paste Style. This will paste the pattern into the path along with the size changes we made. And we can actually just select all of the others by selecting this first one, then shift clicking the others. And now we can go to Edit, Paste Style. Okay, now we want to select all of these paths with patterns on them. And we want to turn them back into normal paths by going to Path, Object to Path. We can go ahead and delete the stitching path and the pattern paths up here. Now let's select all of the text paths and group them with Ctrl G. 
Then shift click the background objects, open the align and distribute dialog with this button, and align the objects vertically and horizontally with these buttons. One more thing we can do is add the noise fill filter to the background object to make it look like fabric as well. So let's select the background object, duplicate it with Ctrl D, click this button to put it below the text, then go to Filters, Overlays, Noise Fill. Let's bring the opacity down a bit. Okay, now let's click Apply and close this out. Alright, so that's how we can create a logo with a stitched effect in Inkscape. I hope you found this lesson useful, and I hope to see you in the next one.